<laughs> fresh off a remarkable non-playing season in which uh, he seems to have the whole band back together with free agency through uh, that looking glass and a draft in the books. The general manager of the world champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jason Light, back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Jason? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Rich? I am doing better uh, for, for you asking. Thank you for asking. How's life? How's life for you, Jason Light? How's everything? Life is uh, pretty good. It was a hectic off season. One of these days, going to realize we won the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> uh, how did you, um, I guess, how did you go about it? Did you have like a list of, I'm going to hit these people and I'm going to get them handled? Or how many plates were you spinning at once trying to re sign everybody that were free agents from your championship team, Jason? Well, there are quite, quite a few of us here spinning a lot of plates doing this. Um, you know, no one person can do this on their own. So I have, I have a great staff. Um, we didn't necessarily prioritize any one over the other. We kind of prioritized every one of them. And everyone was unique, every negotiation, and just started. I kind of felt like uh, the Seinfeld episode, as soon as we got one done, we'd ring the bell and, uh, you know, <laughs> and have another one and mark it up on the chalkboard. So it was uh, finally, we were finally able to get through all of them. I, I, at the time, I didn't, I didn't realize that it hadn't been done since whatever, 1977. If I would have known that, then I would have been a lot more stressed about so, it. But uh, once Bruce made the proclamation at the, at the <laughs> boat parade, and then I doubled down and said the same thing, and then I turned around and I said, oh, no, what did I just do? <laughs> Saying that you could re-sign everybody, that you could get yeah, it done. Yeah, we could re-sign everybody. But we were confident. Guys wanted to come back. It's a great environment, great head coach, great ownership, great quarterback. We uh, – a lot of great players, so it's it was uh it wasn't as it wasn't as I mean everything's a little bit strenuous getting through negotiations. They're not all easy, but uh, at the end of the day, everybody wanted to be here, so that's that's exciting. So uh, does that make you the Lloyd Braun of general managers, if I'm not mistaken, based on your analogy <laughs> right there, Jason? Did you? <laughs> and who does that make Costanza's guess, dad? Is that Arians Costanza's dad in the garage of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe you could say that. Okay. Although I, I will still uh, George's dad's line of serenity now. After it's all done. <laughs> well, you got it done, Jason. You definitely got it done. H- how much did Brady play a role in in all of this, Jason? Well, the fact that we were, we extended him, were able to, you know, give us some relief on the cap was big. And the players, you know, what Tom brought to the organization as a leader, uh, you know, is, is priceless. And having him and Bruce as our head coach and quarterback tandem, uh, both excellent leaders, both very unique people. And in, in what they do, the way they do it is it obviously played a huge role in these guys wanting to come back and, and be a part of it again. Well, I mean, the reason why I asked this too, as well, is did did he make some calls to help the band get back together here to twist an arm, pound a table uh, to you, or twist an arm with uh, one of his teammates to 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 come back? I think we were all pretty much on the same page, Bruce, myself, him, on that we wanted to bring back as many as we could. I don't know what conversations he had, uh, you know, with with our players. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I just knew at the beginning of free agency, I said, hey, I'm going to do my best to get everybody back. And that was really the last we talked about it. And then your conversations with him um, personally, Jason, I, 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 tr- I really want to dig into this as much as you're willing to share, because I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that there are some other teams with first ballot Hall of Fame quarterbacks who might be having an issue with not having a say and how a uh, um, – in a roster is fashioned around them and to their desires. And they're all pointing at your organization with you and your quarterback and saying, how come you, we can't be more like them? And uh, what, what is your relationship with Brady? Do, do you ask him what he's interested in? Does he volunteer it? Like what, what is, what is the, the secret sauce that goes in right here, Jason? It, it, you know, it's, 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 that's a fair question, but we, he came to our team with because of the great coaching that we have, the great head coach and the, the, the great players. And he wants to play with great players. 
there's never been a conversation, well, you better get this guy or we don't want that guy. or uh, I've never talked to him about the draft. Bruce and I did mention to him leading up to the draft that we might take the quarterback. Just We would do that with any great quarterback, but yet alone the GOAT. But he's he had, I, well, I hate to sound cliche, but he trusted uh, in the plan that we wanted to bring everybody back, and there were really no, never any side conversations about uh, how far along are we with this guy? What should I do? What can we do? Um, move on from him. He's, he's not like that. He's a great leader, and um, he's you know he's got the players' trust, and he trusts us. And so there's really never much of a conversation of you saying, well, you know, who do you like? Because, again, I, I and I know this is a very touchy subject, and, and, and so I ask it gingerly, but it just seems that you, you've got a relationship and it all worked out. You won a championship. You, you extended him. That is the envy of every over 35 GOAT quarterback for their franchises. And, and it seems like you're, you're on cruise control in that respect. And that's why I'm trying to figure out what the two-way street might be here to, you know, because he's got a window of opportunity in his mind. And you're dressing that window of opportunity. And it seems like it's being dressed the manner in which it makes him very happy. And I'm wondering how that works with your relationship, Jason. Well, I think he's. I think he was very happy just with the players and the roster and the coaches, like I said before. And now with with any great player like Tom at that position, if we're thinking about signing uh, Gio Bernard, for example, I'll let him know. Hey, thinking about signing Gio Bernard, a little push might help. He's like, I'm on it. Um, love that kid, you know, uh, with Leonard last year. That, that's awesome. I'd love that he'd be a great addition. I'll, I'll help you out, you and Bruce out, as much as I can. So I think he likes the fact that we, we tell him, you know, who we're thinking of signing every once in a while, if it's, particularly if it's going to help him at, 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 you know, on the offense. So, but in terms of having a, a meeting where we go over the board and talk about all of our plans, uh, that's, that's just not his style. He's, he trusts us, like I said. And then um, when you had Jason Light, GM of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here on the Rich Eisen Show, I'm going to ask you the $64 million question here. Um, when you talked to him about extending, was there a sense that this is the last contract extension you're going to have a conversation with him? Did he give you any indication at all how long none. he wants to play? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, you know, I want to keep all those conversations, most of them private, but no, no, no inkling at all. Uh, I told him if he wants to play till he's 50 and he's still playing – and he feels like he can still play. He can play until he's 50. So, And then you mentioned you and Bruce did say, heads up, um, we might be taking a quarterback in the draft. You did give him that heads up. Yeah, I gave him that heads up. Okay. He just didn't – he almost responded as if, you, I appreciate you letting me know. You didn't need to let me know, but I appreciate it. And whatever, whatever we have to do to make the team better. So what do you say to Kyle Trask? Welcome to the team. There's uh, there's your quarterback room with the goat. Um, understand that you might have to take his elbow during a, a boat parade, but other than that, like, what do you what do you say to Kyle Trask when you welcome to the team, Jason? Well, actually, I had the chance to talk to him a few times since, and uh, told him he's got a great opportunity with this, you know, playing behind Tom and and Blaine is a great uh, mentor as well, and and then obviously this coaching staff, um, Byron and Clyde Christensen and. Bruce and Tom Moore, it's, he's a great opportunity, and I think he's he's beyond excited about it. It's it's uh, I, I, like I said, I think it's a great opportunity for a young quarterback to come in and and see and see firsthand how how you know Tom Brady operates. Yeah, get ready for a game. Zero pressure in a season. Zero pressure, right? I mean, just like zero pressure. Just learn what you can learn, glean what you can glean, and and just um, check Tom out. All you can, I guess that, and then and and then you point out. I mean, what a hell of a coaching staff you have of all the experience together. It seems to me that Bruce is totally um, energized. Not like that that's ever been a question, but obviously with him coming out of retirement, um, that he seems re-energized. And is, is there any talk about how how long he wants to still be at it, Jason? To you, there we really haven't had that talk. We're in this. Uh... In this business, it's a year. One year seems like ten. Right. So, he, I do, I do agree with you. He, he has felt never felt better, never looked better, and he is energized. He's got a, he's got a great staff that I don't want to say we're on cruise control because he rides them 
um, like any good coach does, but he has total trust in, in his entire staff, offense and defense. Well, he loves Leftwich. I, I mean, like he, you know, he 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 handpicked Byron, um, you know, in many different ways from being a player to being a coach. And then I know he was here when he was, you know, out of the game and in the booth at CBS at the time, literally sitting in the chair that's to my right here, Jason, talking about how he was fearful sometimes that he might have a, a health episode on the sideline and he would never come back without somebody who he trusted to call the plays. And that person is Byron Lefwich. And I, I mean, he is beyond dynamite. And I, I'm wondering what you, you think of him long-term future for your franchise as well. Well, Jason, well, we're, we're in a, we're in a great position where we have a lot of great coaches and Byron is one of them. Todd Bowles, um, Harold Goodwin. Um, we're, we're, we're stacked at our coordinator position. So, uh, our special teams, um, I think we're going to be a lot better this year, and we improved in a lot of areas last year. So we've we've got a lot of great coaches, and we're we're focused on this year right now. But we do have a lot of coaches, I think, that would be uh, great in the role of head coach. In the few minutes I have left with you, Jason Light, GM, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, what is what is the the I guess front burning issue on your radar screen uh, obviously we we heard you know tom did get on a call with the players association and pushed reportedly to use this moment um to push back against uh the amount of time that players are in quotes required to be there or either not mandatory but kind of made to feel that way uh, are, are, is there an issue with the Bucks getting you getting your players there for Bruce to get their hands on? I mean, what what is what's going on on that front for you? We're just going to have to see how it plays out here. Of course, we would like to have as many players, uh, the players that the less experienced players, whether it's rookies or or first, second, third year guys, backups, uh, other positions, to get them as prepared as possible, and. You know, the the best way for that would for them to get as much work in as possible. But we're just going to have to uh, see how it plays out, and our hands are tied right now. And it's, we'll we'll see what happens. But we we just want to make sure that our players, when they when we do report, um, get ready for the season and training camp in in July, that they're in the best possible shape that they can be in. So, is there uh, what what's on your radar screen now? That you're you're post draft. You got your undrafted free agents. You've got you know mandatory mini camps coming up, and obviously um, everything out. Like literally, what's on your radar screen of concern for a general manager of a world champion club right now? Like I said, that that everybody's in great shape. That we don't have a lot of injuries once we report in, in for training camp, and everybody's uh, up to speed the best that they can be. So we can hit the hit the ground running and where we left so where we left off last year so and and to be honest with you my, my what's on my radar is is rookie minicamp coming up and then and then taking some time off with my family for crying out loud good for you good for you um, and last one for you Jason I mean I I, I don't want to create a rift here um, and that's obviously a very controversial way to start a question but I had Bruce Arians on the the um, NFL draft coverage live on NFL Network. He said he was the one who threw the uh, Lombardi Trophy from one boat to the next first before Brady. Were you? Did you witness this? Is this is this true? Did he flip the Lombardi I did. Trophy? I did. I was I was on the boat. My family was on the boat with with Bruce and saw him toss it over. Come on. I mean, now it was a it was a two foot toss. But okay. Still. <laughs> but still, there was there was a moment where the Lombardi Trophy was aloft already um, in the air. From one boat to the yeah, other. Yeah, you know, and Bruce was more of a rushing quarterback than a throwing quarterback. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hold on a second. So, did he flip it over Tom Moore to get it there? Is that what he's doing? I mean, like, <laughs> like walk walk me through. Like, so, and it, was it Brady's boat that he flipped it to? Is that how that worked? Yeah, it was. You know, it was a good toss. I, I didn't mean to take anything away from Bruce by saying he was more of a rushing quarterback, but um, right, it okay. was a pretty good toss. It was more like an option toss, and. and um, and anyway, like I said, it was about two feet away, and it was uh, it was done to perfection. It really wasn't a flip. Okay, very good. And then last question on it. I could, I, I could understand exactly why memories are hazy. Um, who caught it on Brady's boat? What, did Tom catch it? 
was it thrown from Arians to Brady? Or was it that, uh, that is where things get a little hazy here. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. And it's not because, you know, it's been too long since the boat ride. I could ask you that question with two minutes after it happened. It would have been hazy at the time. Is that what you're saying, Jason? <laughs> You, you you might be saying the right thing. Okay, very good. I just want to be accurate. That's all I want. Hey, Jason, <laughs> thanks for the time. I always appreciate it. Let's talk uh, during the summer and get uh, set for the season. Enjoy seeing the schedule coming out on Wednesday. Do you have a sense at all right now who you think you're going to be opening the season against right now? You got an inkling? What do you think? I, I, I really don't. I don't have any sense. I just know I'm sure it'll be a very good team that we're going to have to get ready for. And it is a Thursday <laughs> It is a Thursday night, though? They're not going to do it on a Sunday? You're, you're planning for the, the first Thursday? Is that what that is? I, I, the only inkling I have, and it's not because I have information, but right. the only inkling I have is that it would be a Thursday night. Right. But, you know, that, that I could be wrong there as well. Okay, Jason, thanks for the call. Truly appreciate it. I hope you do get that time with your family. You deserve it. Thank you. Appreciate it. They do. Thank you. Excellent. You got it. That's Jason Light, everybody. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.